Okay, my DNA tested giants are probably about the same time the size as these guys. If that obelisk was, let's say, I don't know, 100 feet tall, whatever it is, my guy in my yard is at least 150 feet tall. So they could have easily been doing the, what these guys are doing here. All right, this is a giant fingertip from a giant hand of a giant human, and it was DNA tested. I broke a piece off there so I could get down inside where the blood was. Totally flush with blood. That is the fingernail. This is the blood supplies. This little round pad here is the bumper pad that bumps into your next bone so that it rocks on there. These two spots are the blood supplies that come in. This I broke off, and there is fingerprints still on there. It was absolutely flawless, and it's gigantic. It's almost three feet long. So I've calculated out the thing should be damn close to uh, 150 feet tall. Now, these are the ridges on your fingerprints, just like these ridges. In those ridges are these little tiny sweat pores. There they are right there. You see the sweat pores? These are the fingerprints, and this is the piece I broke off. I went down inside where all the blood is, and there was plenty of it. I had no problem getting blood. This is the key with my fingers. You see right up there, remember I showed you the two little blood supplies. This, where, this is exactly where you are, way up here. <laughs> That's it. These are two little blood supplies, and then there's blood supplies on the side and on the end. And they are just totally flush with blood. I mean, you can see the blood. And um, I have all kinds of really good good shots of how blood flows in a hand and it is dense dense because these are what they call the terminals what happens is you got vein blood or artery blood coming in and you see artery blood comes in on this side artery blood comes in on this side then the vein blood comes back and the vein blood comes back they're two separate systems so your artery blood comes down, goes anywhere it wants because it's saturated with good stuff. Then the vein blood gets sucked back and there's nothing other than just one vein basically that goes back at the terminals to, to bring that blood back to get recharged. This is where most of the action happens at your fingertips and your toes. That's where the terminals are. In most cases, there's a lot of other places that there's veins obviously because there's blood flowing everywhere. but. Um, these are the major ones. Let me show you what happens in the hand when you put it under um, field effects. <laughs> How cool is this? <laughs> in my, my logo print, you see this is glowing, crazy glow. And then the tips, the same thing, because this is where blood is just absolutely dense. And that's something, and that's, that's under um, magnetic field effects. Uh, and here's what the blood really looks like you see how many vessels there are people don't realize how how saturated you are with blood I'm, every single cell has to be saturated with blood continuously 24 hours a day seven days a week and it continuously moves because it's used up very quickly in four or five minutes you're dead because your blood hasn't moved you know, if you, your heart stops pumping, you're dead very quickly. Now, this is where that real glow is, and then the tips were where, where the extreme glow was. And that's what my my hand logo shows. Hey, look at that. Look at the glow here. And then, of course, they're going to be out here, too, wherever they dense in blood. Just the way it works. And it's just a little anatomical version of how all of this stuff fits together and articulates. Very interesting. Alright, this is the littler one that's on my property. It's still over three feet wide. I think it's almost four feet wide, the, the hand. And I have fingertips and knuckles and all kinds of things from this. And I have all kinds of body parts from this actual one because this was just buried just below the surface when they did a foundation from my addition I had to put on. These things just popped out, and the fingertips and everything. I had a DNA test that's hundred percent human. <laughs> it's just what it is. They somehow were gigantic, gigantic creatures, and they they were all drowned in the flood. This is from a flood. Now, remember, I showed you the grip skin on that big gigantic fingertip that I popped off. This is the grip skin on this hand, and that grip skin is that 
very heavy keratinized tough they call it grip skin friction skin and that does the job on your hand it's just like a rubber like a pad of rubber all over your fingers and all over your palms and your toes and your heels okay so as I said I'm a little upset this is a fingertip on my property I had a DNA tested and, and it is human. It is almost three feet long. This is where the blood supply comes in. That's the little pad that bumps into your next bone. That is literally the fingernail. That's the fingernail. It's not in bad shape. And I broke this piece off right here to get down into where the blood is. Fingertips and toes are saturated with blood. And I had the DNA tested and it is human. And there's fingerprints. You see that? That's the fingerprint I broke off off the side. These are the sweat pores. See the sweat pores? This, and it broke right, right off like it, it came right off. It's like the layer underneath it came off just like Velcro, <laughs> just like that. Like th this is like a rubbery piece. And you can't get any blood out of that. That's why I had to get it out of there. I know these things inside now. I, I got them all over my property. And I'm, I'll show you another one. I got a hand out there that's almost four feet wide. This is three feet long. That's just a fingertip, just the tip of the finger. The other one, the hand itself, is four feet wide. And it's, anyway, this, and that one's DNA tested too. I'll show you the DNA test. But this is, my finger is about the width of one of the ridges in your fingerprint. All right, this is gigantic. I've, I've calculated I was about 150 feet tall this guy would have been if everything anatomically was exact and it appears to have been all right here's another one it goes back to 2015 I was the first one in the world and so was the helix biolabs to test for human DNA in ancient rocks I extracted the blood samples and I sent them to helix they did not do the extraction they did the analysis of what I sent them. I sent them three mud fossil samples, and they did the they extracted DNA from the samples I sent them. They did not extract them from the actual complete mud fossils. Then they did PCR DNA sequencing and analysis, and the objective was an analysis to perform extraction of any genomic or mitochondrial DNA from these mud fossils. Upon successful DNA extraction from the sample, subsequent analysis will include the amplification of extracted DNA using PCR technology targeting specific DNA marker sequences to obtain DNA sequence from the amplified PCR products. What does that mean? They are going to look at DNA if they can find it and they did and they found it was excellent quality and it was dense because I know where to take it from and I took it right out of the blood I literally sent them almost blood that was dry now so what did they do they checked it to see what the sequences were in this DNA and if it had these exact targets you see targets this you, your DNA has got bazillions of particles now there's sequences that determine what if you're a, a homo sapien or you're a zebra or whatever you are. And if they can find that set of sequences, because there's a, still about, let's say, just I'm just throwing a number out. Let's say there's 500 particles in a row that are exactly the right, <laughs> right particles. That's not going to happen accidentally. That means you are the thing that that 500 particles represents, which is homo sapien in this particular case. So what they did was they took out those particles and then they had them all figured out and I don't know, they did a lot of testing on them and so forth. And then they sent them off and they, you know, they used all very, very serious stuff. Because this is the first in the world. He, you know, I worked with the guy at the lab there and I said, Tom, his name was Tom. I said, Tom, this is first ever. I mean, can you do it? And he said, well, we don't know. He said, nobody's ever done it before, but we can try this. So they, they did this paper following the procedure. He said, I found procedures that might work with this. And I said, well, do what you can do. You know, and I, I paid him, you know, and it, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't that expensive either. Well, it was expensive, you know, but it wasn't, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. It was enough I could pay for, let me put it that way. All reactions involve one primer per 
reaction. In some instances, better quality amplification of the target mitochondrial DNA was achieved using DNA from the second elution. So in other words, they did it on different ways to get different concentrations and densities. And But whatever they did, when they got it done, it ended up being um, successfully you know, tested for mitochondrial DNA. That means the mother's side. So, and we all have the same mitochondrial DNA, which is the mother's side. And it comes down to here where they say PCR product is submitted to Eaton Bio, Biosciences in New Jersey. Now, this is a, the one I had, um, Helix Bio Labs. They did the extraction of the DNA sequencing, and they, and they sequenced it. All right, or in New Jersey for DNA sequencing, the primer pairs da 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 were used to generate the PCR products. Were also in DNA sequencing. Excellent quality DNA sequence was obtained for that gigantic fingertip, the thirty, the long one. It's almost thirty-six inches long, and the long. One. Here's the long. Hold on, because these were found basically in the same hole. That lung is our size, and that lung is again perfect. High, very, very dense um, blood came out of that tip because that's where the blood collects at the tip. And um, so, anyway, this was all sent off, and it came back Homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome B gene and D loop region, both of them mitochondrial, and both all of them Homo sapien. And here's all of CTAGs, and you know, this is the sequences in the DNA that shows and proves what it was. You don't get all that stuff in an order like that and have it just be accidental. All right? And um, this is a pretty serious test. And again, this was the, the first in the world that was ever done. And I talked to Tom about this because he was getting attacked. By people, you know, it's, you know, I, you know. Anyway, all right, I don't want to go down that road, but, but anyway, here's what they ended up happening: they submitted these DNA sequencing to a blast search using the National Center of Biotechnology Information (NCBI) database, which apparently has every every known sequence of DNA. So it says, whereby each DNA sequence was matched to all DNA sequences contained in the NCBI DNA sequence database. So I don't know how many there is, but all. Now, the results of that BLAST search, so they just said, see if you could find any sequences that match these using the DNA sequences they generated from these things that I sent them, indicates the Homo sapien mitochondria. Now, if I'm wrong, they have to prove I'm wrong. Anatomists say yes, they're identical to a human lung. It even has the depression of the heart because it's a left human lung, and the heart would sit right there as this guy died flat in the flood, and that's why it's so flat like that on the back. Now, this is what also upsets them terribly because it evolution it totally wipes out evolution. I'm showing you giants that they had talked about in the Bible, in the ancient texts. Every one of them talks about giants. Every culture on earth talks about giants. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. And they also talk about dragons. One hundred percent. And I have found them very, very, very large dragons. This is what upsets academia. And until they will address that, they have gone into a range where they, have not, they are not doing their job.